Hey, Ryan, 511-190 in Newtown, not like it is used colloquially, but just moved to Dallas, so I am new in town per se. Okay. I make a good deal of money and want to buy a Ferrari. This guy's doing great. My wife thinks it's ridiculous. She wouldn't think so if the car was for her and she got it for her birthday. Ooh, tension. I bought her a Lexus amongst many other expensive things. Most recently, a house she loves and adores. I typically spend money on my friends and family, tickets to games, shows, cash, trips, etc. And rarely make any personal big purchases for myself. Since I was a kid, I always wanted a Ferrari. And now I can actually buy one. I'll be honest and admit that spending that kind of money for a car, I'll drive less than 4,000 miles in a year is egregious. And it really is fruitless when you cut it every way. Aside from utility in the economic sense, it's not like I'm using it to pick up women or anything but I really fucking want it and have the means to do it. Thoughts. Um, Side note, my wife also makes good money, about 1 20th of what I make. This guy's killing it. Uh, When I float the idea of buying things for myself, such as watches, cars, that's pretty much it. She pushes back and almost castigates me for spending, admittedly, gross amounts of money for materialistic things. Again, she loves all the expensive materialistic things. I buy her. Sorry to drag on. Any advice is needed. Um, I'll just put myself out there. I looked into it. Ferrari? Yeah, I looked into it. <laughs> okay, as someone who's never priced them, what's a Ferrari set you set a guy back? Well, you lease it. You know, I think well, you would lease it. Okay, what's yeah. what do we what's the note? What's no. our monthly note for the guys whose credit score used to start with a 5? What's well, here, the monthly? Let's, Just tell me how much it is. Well, there's 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 a little ex- explaining. I'll get to it quickly, all right? Here's how like remember when I went sidecar and Van Pelt stops me in the parking lot. He's like, wait, did, are you a two-car guy now? And I go, yeah, I got a little little sporty Lexus sedan to go with the, the SUV. Yep. And Van Pelt's like, that's such a fucking baller move. And I was like, thank you. Thank you for understanding. I was like, I always wanted to do it. And I did it. And I did it. So there you go. And by the way, the lease on that Lexus was was minimal. Negligible. What, right. Negligible. But what... What I was originally looking at, I was I was looking at that that Audi. Is it the Quattro? I'm trying yeah. to think. I think well, it's I like mean, they make a Quattro. Yeah, it's, it's not the Quattro. It's whatever that crazy one is, where I think it's over 200 grand for that car. And again, I was wow. just going to do a lease. I wasn't going to buy the thing. And I went to go test drive it. The guy's like, by the way, full circle here. He's like, we have to run a credit check. I'm like, you have to run a credit check to let me drive this to test drive it. And he goes, yeah, it's just the way it works. I go, well then. I'm not going to let you do my credit. I can't handle that ding. Seven points, just test drive a car. Fuck no, I'm not doing that. So what happened was a guy was like, you could get a Maserati, but how much you're willing to spend, you'd get the worst Maserati or you can get the best Lexus. And the best Lexus is better than the worst Maserati. It just doesn't look as cool maybe, but engine wise and all the performance stuff, like this is actually a better car. Not All right. So getting us to the Ferrari and the pricing, you can get into one for a little money down. And maybe three, four K a month to lease it. But you can't do that and lease the starter kit Ferrari. You have to get to like the four hundred thousand, the five hundred thousand dollar one. And then the lease on that, when you start doing the math, you go, I don't care how rich you are. It's it's a it's a cash burn, man. And by the way, it's not like, hey, do you want eight or ten thousand miles for your lease? It's like we're gonna give you two, three, or four. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I'd have a hard time, and I'll let you jump in here. I'd have a hard time, no matter where I was at, to say I can burn that kind of cash on a Ferrari lease for a car that I'm not even going to be driving every day. I don't know. No, I mean, a Lexus or Audi or some little sportier model that's less uh, of a utility vehicle than an, an SUV, sure, I'm, I get it. You want something to tool around down the, uh, in Malibu in a fine. But how I, 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 I'm very hesitant in life to cast aspersions to people on people that have achieved success and you want to spend your money how you want to spend it. I just don't believe this email from this person. The whole thing sounds like it's bullshit. I don't believe it. Wait, you don't believe any of it? No, I don't believe it. This person's just spending, giving money to friends to take trips, buying houses for it just. Go back and go back and listen to the story. Does the story sound believable? No, I don't think he's just giving money to people. He says I what? typically spend my money on my friends and family. So he's the guy covering the tickets. Okay, he's the one covering tickets for shows. 
Okay, um, but so so the so the way I'm hearing this then is that he's bought a very nice house, which yeah. he, which not just for his wife, but he and his wife enjoy it. Right. Okay, if if we're just if we're accepting this very articulate email at face value, which is always is, dangerous. Yeah. For, I'll humor this emailer and say, if you've achieved this level of success where you're able to comfortably look after friends, family, your your wife, and you want to spend a, a shit ton of money on a car that makes you feel happy, then get the car. You don't have to you 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 you're everyone's on scholarship because of you and you don't get to do something that makes you feel happy because your wife is going to give you a hard time for that. I would say, now, hold on. If if we couldn't meet other obligations because I'm spending an obscene amount of money, this cash burn, then sure, I see what you're saying. But I'm covering everything as is and and daddy wants to feel happy in the red car tooling down the road. Then get the car. Life's too short to not get it. But yeah. Yeah, if you can do it, go ahead and get it. I just think that there's, I mean, look, even with the private a- aviation deal, like when you actually see how much it costs, like there's a number where I go, yeah, I don't know, I'll probably just get a first class ticket on Delta. Yeah, no, no, there's, there's, <laughs> and I'm, right, not, I'm not knocking the friends at wheels up, but there are times where you go, wait, what? For certain, of course. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I certainly can't af- afford to go from A to B that way all the time in my life. It's, but th- that's a whole different conversation. Right. For, for, for this guy who's the way I heard it, he's loaded. Is, he's loaded. He's, right. You're super rich and yeah. everybody's good. And it's not like your kid can't go to college because I got a Ferrari. No, you're good. And, and maybe you love it, right? Maybe you love it. Maybe you renew. And then maybe after a year, you go, look, we got a Ferrari Roma here at South Bay Ferrari. There you go. You know, this the thing's real- at 400,000. The real question for your email, I think, is, is is what's the source of tension between you and wifey when it comes to this stuff? I mean, if, if you're doing great, I think you 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 can have an adult conversation where you say, "I love you, you love me." Uh, I want to give myself uh, a, a little. This is something I've always wanted, and I have the means to do it. And I shouldn't have to ask for you know. Well, the permission part, yes, but I shouldn't get a ton of crap for it down the road if we've covered the fact that we're good, even if I do this. You know, I like I like art. Sometimes I buy a little art. You do you know, like art, yeah. Wife doesn't always love it, but I'm like, listen, this this little Banksy on the wall here, you've done pretty well on that one. Huh? You got to trust your, you got to trust my eye. You might not like it, but but just trust. Got to trust. Relationships are about trust, right? Yeah, that seems annoying. Dropped, I just name dropped a Banksy, which is really really just low. That's really distasteful. Yeah, I don't know. The people might get done with this episode and be like, maybe those guys suck. Yeah, uh, and Paul, is he an art snob? We got a 2020 Ferrari 488 Pista. Yeah, it's only 1,900 miles on this one right now. What is that? To, what, how much is that setting you back? This one. This thing's nice. Uh, Buy it. 530 grand. Do it. Do it. You won't do it. Here's what you I would won't. say about any of the high ticket items or the really luxury items. Uh, you can buy them and then whatever that rush is from buying it, it kind of goes away. Uh, or oh, you're in a, or you're in a Ferrari. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm imagining on a sunny day when the world is right and you got a lot of those out there where, where you live, you know, you, you're probably not going to have too many days where you're driving around in the rain, pulling into the grocery store thinking, I probably could have done this in the, in the Yukon. You know, I, I imagine mostly it's just a whole lot of smiles and happiness, I would guess. Okay. Uh, let's do one that has nothing to do with assets. All right. 6'6". Six, six. Hey, almost Van Pelt's height. 260. Got me beat there. <laughs> Working on getting back to 225 and dunking again. There you go. Um, I'm a lawyer, run a satellite office for a national firm. One of the lawyers I supervise, let's call him Larry, has been an issue. Larry has taken the laid back approach, uh, laid back. He's taken the laid back nature of pandemic work to an extreme working from home frequently and went in the office wearing ripped jeans and backwards hat. I'm 43. And when I started being in the office from eight to six and wearing a suit daily was expected. By the way, early SVP Rosilla days, SVP show days. I got dressed up. I, somebody showed me a picture from a 2010 show the other day. I love dress pants and dress shirts. And once I once I got north of 
there were just some dress shirts. I have way too many dress shirts now. I never wear them ever, but I, I was not afraid of a nice press dress shirt back in the day. I, I admired that. You'd come in in a nice tweed slack, a proper shoe, and a, and a you know, and it actually served as content because we had out of rotation shirt days, which we got some mileage out of. But uh, we did. So, so it sounds like Larry's just, he's punted on that? Yeah. Larry's just, you know, he goes, I'm, and our emailer says, I'm okay with some of the changes as long as the work is getting done. But now here's the problem Larry's work productivity has been down and his hours are not up to expectations. I was reviewing bills and notified a significant, uh, let me pick that up. I was reviewing bills and noticed a significant number of hours were spent on a task. When I looked for the work product, it wasn't there. I asked Larry about this. He claimed it must be on his home computer, even though everything should be saved to the work server. That's a great point. He said he would send it to me when he got home so I could finalize the bill. Okay, great. I hadn't gotten by 7 p.m., so I sent a reminder email to him. I went to bed. This guy goes to bed at 7. This guy's a this guy's a real hard charger. Um, I went to bed without getting his response. He may not go to bed at 7. That could just be the way he works. Ruling on that, Van Pelt. He, went to, he sent the email at 7. Let's not assume he goes to bed at 7. Um, I went to bed without getting a response. Oh, see, that's the window there, so he doesn't go to bed bed at seven. I've, I've ruined this part of the email. I apologize to everybody that's listening. When I woke up, I had a 2 a.m. reply saying he had just gotten the email and had uploaded the document. I find this very hard to believe. Seems like he just went home and did the work, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. That's what now, how do I handle this? I'm not sure I can directly confirm the lie, but I also have zero trust in him now. What's the move? Stop being suspicious and move on or fire him since I no longer trust him and worried he will risk the relationships I spent years building. Don't fire him. Don't fire him. Pandemic's been tough on people. Um, the whole dress thing and the, the way the world's changing me. I had this conversation with Jay Wright. I said, Jay, I, I get the quarter zips. We did. We went to that last year, but you got, you got probably a, conservatively a half million dollars in excellent suits. You got to wear the suits, right? You got, <laughs> and it's been interesting to see. We, Mick Cronin still goes very dapper on the sidelines there in your neck of the woods. Others, very a lot, a lot of coaches are just going for the comfort, the quarter zip, because we got into a comfortable stage with during the pandemic where people just, this is what we do. Um, sounds like Larry. Is that what we call him, Larry? Larry. Larry's the, yeah. So Larry. Right. Sounds Larry's, like Larry got, Larry, Larry started letting some stuff slip. And productivity suffered as a result. But I'm thinking you had Larry there for a reason. Larry's been a valuable member of your, of your office for a while. And you got more good times and good, more good history than Larry than bad. And this was a wake-up call to Larry. Larry went home. He, you know, churned out some hours, billable content, I guess. I don't understand the lawyer game. And he sent it to you. You got to be able to have, you got to be able to have Larry come in and say, listen, Larry, you and I both know what happened. You went home and you did this, uh, and you're wearing your hat backwards at work, and you're kind of not showing a lot of respect for what for the profession and for the office. And I'm going to need you to, to sort that out uh, and get back on track here. And if you do, we're good. And if you don't, then we're going to have a problem, right? Yeah, I don't think fire him. I think you're absolutely right on that one. Um, but right. I would I would want to see how he reacts to just be put in the crosshairs. But like, hey, can you come in and talk to me? Because clearly that's what he did. He didn't do the okay. job. He went home. He worked on it. That's why he didn't respond. He he played it and played it. And so he made up shit. He did lie to you, but he lied mm -hmm. to you in the effort of like, all right, so you realize this guy's been slipping the whole thing. So I would just sit him down and be like, hey, look, here's what I think you did and lay out the timeline just like you did in the email and see how he responds. And if he goes defiant and weird, then you may have a different conversation with him. You know, maybe maybe this is because, you know, the emailer clearly is kind of sick of this guy to even send in the email in the first place. But I wouldn't fire him just because of this. I would talk him through it. And, you know, hopefully he can just say, you know what? I have been slacking or I have been this. But I don't know. You know, people, all of us have a really hard time when we're called out for something, especially when we're wrong. <laughs> you know, right, but, but, but I think. This is this is a, a different flavor. The same conversation about being in about being in Vegas and whether you want to go out and go nuts or when you want to go to the Uber lot. I think I think as you get older, hopefully you have maybe a, a little bit more tolerance for somebody fucking up, which it sounds like maybe this this happened where you just go, all right, look, look, you he's clearly been there long enough for you to have enough 
built up equity that you're not just firing them for what you believe is a lie. So you can actually have an adult conversation just like we're having. I said, listen, this is what this, this is how this reads to me. You tell me if you're sitting where I'm sitting, this is, has to be what you, what happened here. You tell me I'm wrong. Okay. But if it is, then I'm not telling you you're out. I'm just telling you, we can't, we can't carry on like this. We can't just let this stuff slip. And a lot, it's a lot of stuff for a lot of us has slipped in a lot of ways, but we got to be more buttoned up with that. And moving forward, I'm going to expect that you will because you will, right? So you're, I mean, you got to put the onus back on the person and say that and that's that, if, if you have this relationship, you would have earned the right to at least have this, have this mistake, haven't you? Yeah. I just wonder if he's already been doing all these other things and this was the, the crescendo. If you've well, if he's been vocally sucks, trained, if he yeah. sucks, then this is your entree to say you got to go. But it doesn't sound like that. It just sounds like this stuff. It sounds like this is pandemic related where everything kind of slips. And I think that's happened to a lot of people in a lot of different arenas of life, hasn't it? Absolutely. But uh-huh. if you're running a business, it's like, OK, I get it. We all went through something. But now I'm going to need I'm going to need Larry. I'm going to need pre ripped jeans backwards hat larry and nobody hates the backwards cowherd wait is this from colin cowherd backwards hat all right we have one more and then we'll let you get on your day because that's uh, all right that's all right i feel like so far we got you should be able to buy the car and i feel like i feel like you have a conversation with larry and say this is the stop sign for your behavior and we either sort this out or or we're gonna have to have you know we're gonna have to leave the firm no one wants that all right last one the stop sign for behavior I, i like that the only thing I could think of, though, is if it is a firm and this guy's fucking up the billing and a client calls him on it, that also could be a problem. But again, we're both not lawyers, if you could not guess. Okay, no, final I, one I, here. I, have, I took film classes, not law classes. I took environmental law. F. <laughs> <laughs> failed it. Just failed it. I skipped it so much I was embarrassed when I showed up. Right. <laughs> I, do you still have the? I still have the dream. Oh, right? yeah. the, the, the class that you should. You're looking for the class. You show up late. You haven't been. I still have those dreams. No, mine is. I find out I have a final for a class I've never. Of course, gone to. of, of yeah. course, and you right. don't know where the class is. But yet, but yet, even in the dream, you're still strangely confident that when you get there, you're going to be able to pull it off. Is that yeah, I'm happens? in the dream. I'm planning on. Okay. Oh yeah. This is going to be challenging. But I got it. I got it. I'm good. I can get through. I heard it's a lot of hurt. It's a lot of common sense. <laughs> I, when older people, for the younger people listening right now, when older people tell you that something, whether it's, you know, like I took series six, I don't think I took series seven, I took series six and, you know, I asked the guy, cause at one point I was like, I guess maybe I'll do this. And then he was like, I'm like, what's up with the test? The guy's like, it's a lot of common sense. <laughs> it's a lot was of, co- <laughs> I failed it. Of course and you so did. So then the, uh, the partner at the firm was like, who's this fucking idiot bartender? He fit this. This is the easy one. This isn't even that hard. And the guy met with me to find out if I was just an idiot. And then he was kind of like, oh, I don't think this guy's stupid. And so he was like, what kind of prep did you do with my partner? I was like, he told me it was common sense. <laughs> he goes, yeah, for people that have been doing this job for 20 years, it's common sense. He's like, not, not for you. So anyway. he left that part out. Yeah. Left that part out. Common sense. If you've got decades of worth of <laughs> sort of on the job experience if, How do you've I, been, <laughs> if you've been pouring out boiler makers and woo woos for the last 10 years you the common sense you've acquired might not really have an application here yeah if you hit them if you hit them with extra sour our right. profit our liquor our liquor cost is a lot better um yeah hey how do i how do i read this highlight and toss a nat sound Common sense. You'll Common figure it sense. out. You'll figure it out. Just look right there. Those words. There's your words. Read those. All right. Here we go. Last one. Second date disaster. Here we go. Second date disaster. All caps. 29, 510, 265. Ex soccer player. So I'm all cardio biking. I got to ask. Hold on. Yeah. I got to ask. I'm all cardio biking. 510, 265. That's an interesting build uh, for a lot of cardio. I don't, I'm just trying to trying to picture where where the dispersion is. That's got to be a typo, unless he's just a bowling ball of a human being. 
it's yeah, it's all it's like one of those guys who just oh, no, I feel it like the gut, and it's like just uh, it's just it's not muscle, it's just solid. I don't know. Yeah, but he's saying he played soccer. That's like the opposite of. Okay, well we're gonna keep moving on. Um, ex resident of West Hartford, shout out Luna Pizza. I know a big Luna Pizza fan when I see yeah, one right I now. I miss it, miss it. No pie down here like that. We miss you, Luna. Love you. All right, big fan of yours ever since uh, SVP and Rosilla days. This works out great. All right, got a good one for you. Living in Chicago, working in tech sales, went to a Big Ten school. We'll leave it out. Good crew of buddies living here with me. We did our fair share of partying back in the day, but aren't really major drinkers nowadays. Relevant later. Uh oh. Anyway, the story begins a few weekends ago. We were all out at a popular bar for AFC NFC Championship game. We hadn't been at the bar for long before I noticed bold font, an extremely attractive girl, continuing to look back at me. Let's call her Jenna. I gave it a little more time to ensure I wasn't misreading the situation, but sure enough, she kept looking back at me. At that point, I went over, struck up a conversation with Jenna. We hit it off immediately. Eventually, my crew joined up with hers. By the end of the night, I got her number. We even shared a nice little smooch. <laughs> All right. I like how he has these real self-awareness here. He says, normally, I'm very against making out of bars in bars at 29, but what can you do? Yeah. You, you know what? You and, Jen, you and Jenna struck it up, and that felt like the appropriate thing. Okay. Okay. Anyway, we proceeded to text all through the following week and went on an amazing first date. She was funny, smart, loved sports. I could tell she was into me too. Great chemistry. And I knew there was something blossoming. After the date, we even made plans to see each other the next week too. And that's where things went off the rails. I hate where this is going. Cut to last week when we were set to meet for drinks at this awesome new bar. I was running a little late from work. So unfortunately, I had to skip dinner to meet her on time. Uh Uh-oh. The date started off great again, and the cocktails are flowing. Jenna went with Moscow Mules, and I went with Old Fashions. As the date went on through, as the date went on, though, every time the waitress came back to our table, Jenna would order another drink. And even though I wasn't done with mine, I'd order another to keep up. Not my best strategy. We had quite a few cocktails, but everything was going so well that we decided to stop for a nightcap at a bar by my place. This is where things started getting hazy. We had a few more drinks at the second bar, and eventually my haziness turned into a full-blown blackout. In that time frame, apparently my drunken stupor, I went to the bathroom and then just left the bar to go home without her. Didn't say goodbye or anything. A full-blown Irish exit. I even left my coat there. Oh, the alarm bells just went off and you had your, the inner GPS just wanted to get you home. In the morning, I checked my phone and upset alert, Jenna was pissed. When she asked what happened, I was so hungover, I panicked and said, quote, my roommate said there was an emergency that I needed to help handle. Jenna then responded with, why the hell didn't you say any goodbye, though? You walked right past me. Uh Uh-oh. Too proud, I tried to defend my original answer instead of fessing up to the alcohol got the best of me. But after a very few short responses back and forth, she stopped responding. When I texted her later in the week to check in, no response. So this all leads to the reason for the email. The girl was super awesome and I really want to try to win her back, but I'm worried the damage is done. I'm not trying to be annoying or clingy. So do I, one, just take the L and know it's over and not text back or two, come clean with a real story and tell her I don't drink that much and just blacked out. Also, shout out to Roots and Kyle. This is simple. This is simple. Okay. Jenna? I blacked out. I don't drink that much. I I was trying to keep up. I blacked out. I have no idea what happened. I obviously wouldn't have walked past you if I was in my right mind. I wasn't. I made up a story because I was embarrassed. That's what happened. I I would love to see you again. I'll just set, tell you in advance. I might need to have one to your two, um, and that'll <laughs> that'll keep me more coherent. And I'd love to, I'd love another shot at this. That's, that's just the truth is always the right answer. And, and, and in this case, it would explain a lot. You, you, you're, you're trying to tell some girl that you, there was an emergency and that's why you walked past her. No, Jenna, I blacked out. I'm, I am mortified that that happened. And I, I'd love it. I'd love a chance to start over sober and not get to that state again. Cause it seemed like we were having fun before I, checked out yeah that's definitely but i think you gotta add some sweeteners to the deal i would do handwritten no svp style explain it all just like scott just said and then throw in some kind of gift and some flowers and say oh i got a little head to the side thing that seems some resistance from van pelt here on the zoom no you flowers don't buy, you don't need to buy gifts they don't they don't need to be or if you want to send flowers with an hey i'm sorry let me come clean that that that's fine 
I'm just saying, I, you're not, I don't think you need to buy back with gifts. I'm uh, saying there needs to be an effort beyond the text, hey, I'm sorry. I would hold off if you're the guy here being like, and by the way, Janet, like, what's up with your drinking habits? And by the way, that might be a tell that she would be more understanding if you blacked out, if that's how hard she drinks, where you go, look, this isn't normal. This is what happened. I didn't eat dinner. More relationships and people have been suspended from shows because of no dinner than history can ever keep track of. <laughs> <laughs> little little dinner sets the base. We just established that. You know what base. else helps is breakfast and lunch also. Right. So All, any of that. I I think you need to do a little something to show this is more than just the straight apology, though. And that's why when I got the head bob from you, I'm like, all right. So we've already covered all of that. But I, it needs to be I maybe just, handwritten. It need, there needs to be something that people don't normally do to express that you have regret and that you're serious about this person, which you clearly are. Or you know what you could do? You could send her the link to this part of the podcast at go. the timestamp and go, this is how bad I feel. I have two guys, yeah. in various degrees. Jenna, of, give them a chance. Know, give them a chance, and also maybe uh, let, let's let's take a look in the mirror. Like, what kind of what kind of Wednesday drinking are we doing? <laughs> huh? You put a guy out. He left. Yeah. Huh? What is she from Baton Rouge? I mean, yeah. this is unbelievable. And by the way, how great is it if we can allow to laugh when they tell the story at their wedding? <laughs> Him just walking by, no coat, zombie mode, not saying a word to this girl that he's been out with all night. I'm trying to, and in, in this in this part of the podcast, I am playing the role of Jenna. There goes, what's his name? Uh, we're leaving that out. Okay, here goes 29 year old Big Ten school guy without his coat. I'm Jenna. What the fuck? Can I get another? <laughs> 